Thank you. Okay, um, welcome to Anita Life, 100 Days to Reclaim Your Health. I should probably take my hands off of this uh, so that <clears throat> I am not rattling your cage. And today, of course, we're going to talk more about sleep. We've spent the most of the week talking about sleep, but here's just a little more details and some other um, opportunities to learn from others about the importance of sleep. So I'm gonna share a couple videos. If you will like, subscribe, and share to this video, as well as uh, share in Facebook or put your comments in Facebook, that would be super awesome to wake up the algorithm so more people find us, so that more people can learn the importance of sleep to be healthy and to be able to join us so that we can um, serve our Heavenly Father and fulfill our purposes here on earth and to help those around us to do the same. And as we start today, of course, I'm going to go ahead and start with a prayer and, um, and then we'll go from there. Our Father in heaven, we bow our heads before thee and thank thee for this day. Thank thee for the opportunity to connect with thee, to be able to draw from thee thy power and strength and understanding of our bodies, to be able to serve thee in all that we do, whether we are out in the community or by ourselves, that our lives are here to serve thee. We ask that thou will help us to learn how to um, get better sleep and to take care of our bodies um, so that we have energy and focus and ability to do all that thou would have us do. And this we say in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Okay, I am actually going to share my screen, but to do that, first I have to find what I was supposed to have pulled up. I had my dog going just a little bit crazy here um recently like 10 minutes ago because um he firmly believes that he should be out chasing the neighbors friends okay i think i've got that so let me go back to here and then to here and then to here and we're going to listen to um, 100 days, 100 days, um, no, a video from doTERRA about sleep. When you sleep, your digestive system slows down. It's best to give your body a few hours to digest before bedtime so your digestive system can rest, repair, renew, and rebuild while you sleep. Plus, if you eat a large amount of food right before bed, you're more likely to be bothered by uncomfortable, sleep-disruptive digestive symptoms. Proper digestion is good for sleep. After all, tummy aches don't usually make for peaceful dreams, and solid sleep influences digestion for the better. But sleep is connected to more than just digestion. It's also connected to nearly every other aspect of health you can think of. Your whole body uses that time for renewing, repairing, and rebuilding. If you focus on getting restful, restorative sleep, you'll see improvements in managing your cravings and other healthy eating habits, metabolism, digestion, and energy. Simply put, sleep will help you with everything you're trying to transform and optimize during this challenge. All right, what challenge is she talking about? Well, it's a 30-day MetaPower challenge. And uh, we will not be doing that right now. So I'm gonna stop that and let's discuss. And I've mentioned this before, but um, it is so important that we 
um, get good rest so that our bodies can use that time to rejuvenate, restore, um, and put things in our brain where they need to go. Okay, so important. Uh, let's go to this next one. I have to bring it up. Shouldn't be very hard to find. Oh, we're gonna talk about sleep hygiene with this. What exactly is sleep hygiene? Sleep hygiene is um, having uh, the right environment inside and outside to promote the best sleep possible. So I need to come back here and do this one. I'm super impressed. I know my way around here now. This was not ever easy for me. All right, here we go. Sleep hygiene. There are several other practices and routines you can follow that will also positively influence your sleep. What you do during the day can help your sleep at night, starting with a consistent wake-up time. And once you're awake, let in the light, open your windows, and expose yourself to plenty of natural sunlight during the morning and throughout the day. Exercise is also important. Ample daytime activity will help your body be ready to rest more soundly when evening comes. Turn off screens at least a half hour before bed. It's even better if you can turn off screens a couple of hours beforehand. If this one is hard for you, consider keeping your cell phone in a different room. If it is in any bedroom, you'll be less likely to scroll in bed. As bedtime approaches, wind down with a routine. You might journal, read, stretch, listen to soothing music, or diffuse essential oils. Washing your face and brushing your teeth are a given, of course. Create an environment that's inviting and conducive to sleep. Consider lighting, sound, and temperature. Lower the temperature in your home so it's a little cooler at night than during the day. If you have any lights that twinkle or blink at you in your room, you might cover them up with electrical tape to help keep your bedroom nice and dark. With sound, some people find quiet white noise from a fan or an app helps them sleep. Others don't find either option helpful, so figure out what works best for you. Most people don't fall asleep the moment their head hits the pillow, so let yourself wind down. As you lie in bed, you might find it useful to think about relaxing rather than sleeping. If sleep comes, wonderful. If not, that's okay. Get back up, walk around for a minute, get a drink of water, or try reading for a while. You can try to sleep again when you feel ready. All right, anyone know why we want to um, not just lay in bed if we're not sleeping? because your body gets used to it. And then it thinks, hey, I don't have to sleep when I'm in bed. That's why, really interesting things. Um, the getting light in the morning, that sunlight, it hits the pineal gland and um, that's what helps you with melatonin. So getting sufficient light uh, during the day will help your melatonin uh, levels at night. So uh, when she says, and she suggested opening up and getting in that natural light, that's a really good thing to do. And morning light tends to be a little better for that than evening light. Um, it's also, the pineal gland is also for female hormone regulation. So we want to take care of that as well. Okay, so those were the things that I wanted to cover for a better sleep. And again, we want to make sure that you, you are unique and different and can get um, use these suggestions or not. But the key is, is that you find a way to be able to get seven to nine hours of sleep a night um, and that's not just laying in bed, that's actual sleep time. And if you're unsure how to measure that, I used, I had a Fitbit, it recently burned me, so I had to take that off, another story, but um, that would tell me uh, sleep. 
how many hours of sleep I got. Sometimes I thought it was pretty accurate. Other times I thought it must have gotten turned underneath my pillow or whatever. But that was very handy to um, just to record, just so that I could know and get a feel for how my body was um, doing with sleep. And sometimes, like I say, I really felt like I got great sleep. And, and it did show that I dive deep into deep sleep for about the first two hours every night. I'm a good sleeper. And then I'll bounce around and then come out of it. So um, uh, having a sleep tracker is a great way to be able to know actually how you're sleeping versus just kind of going by feel. The other thing, and I know I've mentioned this before, is um, if you can, is to get off of caffeine. I actually have a lot of friends who first thing in the morning are drinking um, monster drinks or giant cups of coffee because that's what they have to do to wake up. Um, unfortunately, that is also what is robbing them of their good quality sleep. Not that they're not getting sleep, but they're not getting quality sleep. When I use caffeine for whatever purpose during the day, um, especially I had this one time where I needed a, a little more energy to be able to drive home. And I knew I was going to be driving all night, like getting home at 2 a.m., which is about five hours after I usually go to bed. And um, so I had at nine o'clock normally when I would be going to bed, I had a zip fizz and it, it worked great. It got me home. It got me into um, my bed wherein I immediately crashed, <laughs> but I had a terrible night's sleep because I still woke up at six o'clock that's my body clock working. Um, but I never did get into deep sleep. And so I'm suggesting that caffeine may have that effect on you. And so if you're able to withdraw I mean, I don't want you to ruin relationships over this, but if you're able to do a withdrawal from caffeine in the morning and, um, you know, take that part out and see uh, how much better you sleep at night without caffeine, ooh, sorry about that, without caffeine or sugar um, during the day. It's just a test. This is an opportunity for you to see what works for you. That's all. It's things that I have noticed that I want to share with you because they've improved my life. And um, I hope that they work for you. And if they don't, put it in the comments so that I, we can work together to try and find something else that may work for you. That's my hope is to help you um, be your best self. So um, remember to like, subscribe, and share. And Put comments in the comments so that we can build this relationship and build this community and create a place uh, of growth and um, security. And I'll see you again tomorrow.